friends, it's your girl Melissa Q back with another video and we are here again at Courageous Conversations. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys would consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell because we are coming with Courageous Conversations every other Sunday. So stay tuned. I do have videos also throughout the week and we specialize in high porosity natural hair as well as a splash in beauty and lifestyle. So hope you guys will stay tuned. In today's topic, we are going to talk about the top three things that I think are essential in a Christian-based relationship, especially when you're dating. So I know this is something that I actually wanted to talk about because I feel like that the beginning of the year, you want a fresh start. Um, everyone is like powered and pumped. They're going to the gym. You're meeting new people. But I feel like that these are the top three essential things that actually is under one umbrella. But it's the top three things that I feel like are essential in having a relationship dating. Let me just give a premise to myself. I actually dated in the church. And when I say dated, I didn't date a whole bunch of people. I had a lot of prospects. Um, I did a lot of going on dates in groups with of people like a date night a date night not one-on-one -on -one, but I did a lot of group dating if that makes sense meaning that we out went out with friends and you get to know people and then you kind of like formulate hey let's go out on a one-on-one -on -one to get to know you more I feel like that that was safer for me but also after doing that I did start dating my boyfriend who actually became my fiance and we ended up getting married 18 years later or almost 18 years later it'll be 18 years this year in june i uh, married my best friend and the love of my life who has blessed me with two wonderful boys and a daughter who is now in heaven i am so blessed um, to have the family that I have to have the husband who is also my best friend and so I think that this is something that God really talked to me about in my one-on-one -on -one time as a single woman that is really really essential as well as those people around you it's great to pray but you also need to have some mentorships have some good relationships have some good marriages that are around you of those people that are happy in their marriage and ask them hey what did you do how did you make it work what is working what is not working it's important you should do some research before like jumping into marriage I feel like that's one of the things that we that's the reason why I actually made that video last year for better or for worse because I think these are things that are like conundrums that people don't talk about and we end up falling down the rabbit hole because we don't discuss those things so the tip number one that I would the number one thing that I feel like that you should have in a relationship when you're starting off with someone is attraction I know y'all thought I was gonna like pray the heavens down and prophesy to you but no it is attraction and I have always said this especially to my friends if you cannot roll over to him and see him and if you want to roll back over you're like ooh, or like you want to close your eyes and imagine that it's someone else no sis um you need to be attracted to the person you need to be physically attracted to the person okay now that's not the only thing but i definitely believe like attraction do you see that you can make some beautiful babies with this man okay um and beauty of course is in the eye of the beholder but is he beautiful to you are you selecting something that you don't like are you settling you're like okay um no i mean listen there are a lot of guys out there that are foing foing we say foing yeah but are these guys is the one for you is is your Boaz and you know what I'm talking about he's either a Boaz or a Bozo let me know if y'all want to see that just <laughs> yeah little plug for the next episode if you guys want it but it, do you want a Boaz is this the guy is the guy for you like what do you like I remember talking to my sister 
and uh, we had like a secret code y'all I'm not gonna tell y'all the words because if you heard them maybe you'll know what I'm saying but one of the things that we always liked we had to have a guy with a great smile the person has to be good to look at for you okay um I always say this and I'm gonna give this this was so funny when my aunt gave me this but she was very serious when she told me but she was like girl Melissa listen to me girl if you if you marry a monster you're going to have little monsters so these are things that you just have to be real with yourself about I was talking about this on some uh, some girls some ladies that I admire so much they're subscribed to the channel what's up uh, Yvette what's up Fortuna what's up they those are my girls I was having this conversation on Instagram and we were talking about just compatibility. We were talking about our men. And we was like, yes. You know, we were talking about the ones that weren't for us. And we were seeing some, not only some red flags, but we were seeing, girl, we were seeing black flags. Okay. So check me out on Instagram if you haven't. Um, I do uh, some Instagram, some IG stories. Um, I try to do that. I'm trying to get better with that. But I was, you know, we were just having some chit chat. And we were just talking about, girl. Is he fine? I know that's one of the questions when people ask me, especially a lot of my friends who are dating, if they're considering um, this person, they're telling me, girl, I, you know, Melissa, I really want you and Forrest to meet my friend. You know, we had one of our friends ask us that and we were like, is she cute? he was like is she cute i guess they thought because you know our parents our marriage counselors that we can't counsel sometimes um that we're going to ask you know do they pray in the midnight hour no that is not my first question to you do you think that the person is physically attractive the first thing that attracts them is sight we are emotional but let's just be real women is he fine to you is he fine you know what I'm saying? Is he fine to you? Okay. Is he attractive to you? Is he good looking? Does he smell good? Does he does he groom himself well? Like, is this man gonna like, oh, like when you away, you like, oh yes. Ooh. Is it a, is he attractive to you? And that attraction, there's a chemical attraction that happens. Um, a lot of that is through scent, through grooming. Those things are like, to me, those are things that are very like triggers for me for, in terms of attraction. And that's why I was attracted to my husband. You know, those in the way he smells, the, the you know, oh, the, the smoothness of his skin. Yes, that is attractive to me. All right. You have to be equally yoked in all things. I feel like can you compromise on certain things? No, that's not a game changer. That is a game changer. That is something that's uncompromisable. That is something that is checked off your list that, you know, guess what? Mm. Cause me and Forrest were both fit. Now we're less fit than we were before, but we're still attracted to each other because we know look time has caused a little, some things to go, but he, he's, fit I could we could be better fit than what we are but both of us were athletically like inclined in our earlier years I mean we're still people that love to be active we're active and going and going outside we love to take walks we love to swim we're active like that that is a part that attracted us to each other I played volleyball in college he played basketball those are things that we love about each other. So are you physically attracted to the person? Tip number two, spiritually. It is very close to the physical, okay? But spiritual. And when I say equally yoke this person, and when I say spiritual, y'all, if you're a Christian and this dude is not, then you are going to have some values that are not the same, okay? Christians have like values alike. They have similar values. So, um, you know, when I'm fasting, my husband is like, fasting? What is that? No, girl, come here. Like, <laughs> my husband is not like, oh, okay, you're fasting. Okay, you know, because it, you definitely need to talk to, to your husband or your husband needs to talk about you when you're fasting because you're abstaining from sex, not only from food. Okay, 
when it comes to there's different types of fasts but a solemn fast is you're abstaining from uh, sexual intercourse you're abstaining from food you're abstaining from you know some pleasurable things you're abstaining from social media so you definitely need to talk about that i think but um yeah you need to have those similarities spiritual wise you know there are some things that just the bed is not going to appease it's not going to there are going to be some times when you're going to have to pray together and being spiritually compatible and knowing that you are not marrying someone who is carnal and when I say carnal I mean materialistic like narcissist a, a narcissist um and there are some nurse narcissists in the church this is why I'm saying and that's a whole nother story because everybody that's in the church is not in the building a lot of people that are in the building are not in the church and what I mean by in the church in the body of Christ living for a, a life um, dedicated to God okay I hope you that uh, you understand that I think that it's important to marry someone that has those same values you know uh, if you're a Christian it, you know you love God you're doing community service but he likes to party like he's a party animal like I like going to parties you know there are certain things that I do and don't do at parties even as a Christian but I do like going out it's just my out is different than like in the world out the Bible says that we are in the world but not of the world there is a difference okay so you never definitely need to make sure you know I, I don't want him doing certain things you know he is um, and to smoking weed and not that's not that's not a part of my lifestyle you know what I mean let's just be real with that um, this is something that's legal now in, now in California so um, a lot of people are legally like smoking that's not something that I do that's not something that I want someone that I'm married to to even do around my children and I want him to have value and protect his body that way as well so spiritual i hope i touched on that enough if you have any questions you want to discuss that more definitely drop it down in the comments you know what i'm gonna say topic number three i think we need to be intellectually yoked you don't want to be on this intellectual level and then you consider your spouse dumb you know you are so stupid you're like oh my god like he didn't even get what I was saying oh my god she is an airhead I mean don't select someone and then call them stupid or ridiculous or something for the rest of their life you picked them <laughs> you know what I mean I'm just these are some tips especially if you have not selected that person if you're if you've selected that person that's a whole different discussion okay if you're married to someone that you selected and you weren't on that same level, you know, this is the thing that this is the reason why those topics are so important. Let me tell you something, y'all. When force challenges me intellectually, it's something in the physical that I'm like, oh, that is like, oh, that's like sexy. That's attractive. You know what I mean? It just like gets me going. You know, that energizes my psyche, my physicality towards him. You know what I mean? Um, then if he says something like, you know what? I saw him working, um, working in the ministry and doing something dedicated to God, not towards me, not towards himself, but towards somebody helping somebody that is attractive to me. You know what I mean? Also him, like just something physical about him, you know, that is, that's attractive. That's why I think that all three of those intertwine. Those are must haves. Those are things that's going to keep the basis of, I feel like your relationship together because you are all equally yoked in those top three things spiritually physically naturally obviously not in that same order but those definitely have to be on lock I'm just saying those are essential to me in a relationship and everyone that I know my, my parents have been together on this year it will be 50 years and they will say physical 
emotionally, intellectually, spiritually are a must in a marriage. And I definitely 1000% agree with that. I would love to see and hear what you guys are talking about in the comments. So I'm going to let it go in the comments. Let us hear what you have to say. I would love to get the conversation started down in the comments. Let me know what are the essential things for you in your relationship. What do you think are what do you think are things that are red flags that are black flags? And what are things do you feel like God has spoken to you or even people who are leaders, uh, life changers, motivators, mentors in your life that have spoken a word into you that you feel like is essential and you're like, yes, that is the path that I want to take down the road of success in my relationship. Comment down below. We would love to hear it and get the conversation started. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.